All right. Ed Taylor, if you can hear me, wave at me. All right. <laughs> Good deal. All right. Well, hey, everybody, welcome to our, our Tuesday afternoon webinar. Um, I'm Randy Baxter. I'm the president of Asset Positioning Services. And, and what I've done today is I've tried to go in and I've isolated and discussed with many, many licensees what their biggest fears are. And and I, I've got it down. I mean, it, it's pretty much the same fear everywhere we go. So uh, the title of this webinar today is Identifying and Approaching Suspects. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. If I can teach you how to do that or if I can get you to feel comfortable doing that, and if I can get you to repeat that behavior over and over and over, you're going to have rocketing incomes. And and. I don't know how to to express that enough, except I mean, you got to believe me because I wouldn't be telling you that this is what you need to do. If it wasn't what you needed to do. I, I would be wasting your time and mine. So so identifying and approaching suspects is the topic today. It's it's the the change in behavior I'm seeking for many of you to accept. And it's going to be so important to you if you do. So, so you know, um, um, so here I am trying to present this to you. Uh, I am the president of Asset Positioning Services. I wrote a book a long time ago. Most of you already know it's called Approach, Plan, Succeed. And I wrote that book on purpose, but I didn't have any of the training that we've done. And I didn't have any of the experience that I had with all the agents when I wrote that book. When I wrote that book, I was just trying to tell people what I do. And I never thought about teaching it. I just said, this is what I do. And I'll be honest with you, when I wrote Approach, Plan, Succeed, I was so sick uh, that, that I, I just needed, I, I thought I just needed to leave a legacy. But then I survived. Uh, thank goodness I, I did. Uh, but, but then I turned around and said, there's something missing. So I, that's when I wrote the Family Tree Asset Positioning, the go-to first interview. Because I wanted, especially you younger agents, you younger agents to me are agents that are under age 50. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, I, I wanted to, to say, here's a script that if you follow it, it will lead you to a different wealth status, a different income status. If you'll just repeat the behavior over and over and over, find out what works, learn how to do it, and then repeat it over and over and over and over. So, so then... Then I, I went back in and I said, okay, now I need something else. I need some software. And and I came up with, through Frank Divers, because I was already using software, that's why I created the, the white label that we need uh, that we call Family Estate Doc Software. So so then I realized that, that uh, if you think about my old paintball days when we played Capture the Flag, uh, and I, I used to, I played, I didn't say, oh, but I played it for 24 years, uh, almost every Saturday. But anyway, I realized that, that maybe if I could get people to follow me, that they would see that, yes, I know something that's very, very special, but at the same time, this is very, 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 very easy. And some of you are making it hard. And some of you are struggling with it. So, so when I when I did the video, let me teach you to hunt. I was really, really serious about that, using the cycle of success. And if you learn to do this, you'll never be hungry again. You'll never uh, be looking for uh, uh, being stressed out about paying your bills. You'll just have money, and and people will love you for it because you will have gone in and changed their lives. So. Uh, you know, we talked about it, you know, a couple of times and we talked about it this morning, you know, on, on, on Tuesday mornings and, and Wednesday afternoons, we, we recruit only brand new people. And those, that's not you all know so many brand new people are here today, but, but that's, this is not for brand new people. This is for people that, that have a knowledge base that get an invitation to come to this, to this session on Tuesday afternoon at three o'clock. And here we talk about our mission, our vision, our values, you know, uh, so 
So uh, I'm going to talk to you about the mission of this one training. And, and I'll be honest with you, I've worked on it this morning. I worked on it all day. I've thought about it all day. This is probably one of my favorite lessons. But at the same time, it's probably one of the most valuable lessons that you're going to learn. So if you're on this, if you're on this webinar today, it doesn't matter to me if you're a, a master licensee or a senior master licensee or a licensee or an entry or an employee or whatever, learn what I'm about to say to you. And if you don't want to learn it, that's okay. But it won't be my fault because I'm teaching you something that is solid gold today. And so, so if you're attending, you're going to learn the power of identifying and approaching people who would benefit from a conversation with the, the attendee about that person's current estate plan. And, and you know, my mom used to, don't, don't anybody take this person, okay? But my mom used to look at me and go, if I could just get that through your thick head, you'd be fine. I don't know if your mom's ever said that to you. But if you will just accept this one sentence, your life will change financially and economically. And your prestige in the financial community will go up. And the value that your client places on you will go up. Unless you don't want that. Okay, so, so you know, when I talk about the vision, my vision has always been to create a nationwide network of trained presenters. And I, I'm getting there. There's 140 people now. I think they're, uh, uh, well, according to Greg, there's 141. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I want to create a nationwide network of trained presenters who can lead their clients to the establishment of the proper estate planning concepts that fit their true purpose for money and how to select the proper people in their lives to apply their wishes when they cannot speak for themselves. Everybody wants something like that. Nobody wakes up and stretching and thinking that's what they're going to do by the end of the day. They need someone to approach them correctly and create the desire to have it. But they already want it. They already have the desire for it. But they've never run into somebody that can lead them through the process in a stress-free stress environment with no pressure. Stress-free environment with no pressure. Think about that. So, so you know, when I, when I go in and say, okay, what what are the values of this company? I said positioning services, and, and and this is it. Each of our representatives will be taught how how to identify. You know, once somebody's identified as a suspect, how to approach them. And how to help that person make the best decisions concerning their family dynamics, their estate plan design, their real estate documents, their long-term care plans, their income plans, their health issues, and the proper funding. Now, you don't do it all at once. It's called relationship building. Uh, we had a football coach down here at UT that, that came out with a brick by brick presentation and turned out he wasn't very good at stacking the bricks. But if you do what I'm showing you here, you are stacking the bricks into a firm foundation and a business relationship that should last for decades. And that means, that means uh, you, the children of your client and the grandchildren of your clients. So, so anyway, and again, you've seen this screen before, but when we talk about the financial services industry, the products and the services, the market impact that, that you can have on individuals on a mass quantity basis just by doing the same thing over and over and over, that turns into quite a sales career. And, and you'll get all kinds of testimonials from it. And you'll get all kinds of referrals from it if you do it right. So, so, you know, what are the products and services? Well, I've got it broken down into, you know, 
you got to make the front end sale first, but, but some of you are, are skipping the very thing that, that helps you get to the front end sale. That, mean, that means you have to build the relationship that you have to sell those people on you before you sell them on a product. And there's no better way to do it than to lead them through a conversation that helps them change their lives and makes them feel more secure and protects their family without trying to sell them a product. They will buy the product. Lead them through the process. So, so, you know, and I've said this over to you many, many times, but, but the identification of the suspect and the proper approach is the secret recipe. And you know what? You don't have to use it. You don't have to do it. But the ones that work with me that use it and the ones that work with me that do it have higher average incomes than the ones who are part of this process and don't do it. So, you know, it leads to a conversation that opens the door to all financial services and products. This is where you come in. This is where you become a valuable asset to the family. This is where you're different from everybody else. And, and then that automatically leads to the back end sale, the funding process, the transfer of deeds and real estate, the long term care again, the income planning, the health funding, asset reviews, beneficiary reviews. It's a process, not a product. Don't limit yourself by being a product salesperson. Be good at the products you understand, but please don't limit yourself to a product presentation when you can go in and do a process that opens up. <laughs> It's all products. I thought of an old joke, but I, I can't tell it. Okay. Um, so anyway, market impact. The heads of families all over the United States of America want someone to guide them through this process. They don't wake up thinking that, but that's what they want. They want somebody that goes, wow, this guy's good. This lady's good. They just don't know where to turn. And, and, and when somebody walks up to them and says, hey, I think you would benefit from a conversation with me about your current estate plan, most people are receptive to that idea because they've never been approached on that topic or in, in that easy a way to get them to think about something that affects their family so much. So... So kind of think about it. I don't, I don't care if you've been a licensed insurance agent for 10 years or 20 years or 30 years or 10 minutes. If I can teach you how to approach people who you think would benefit from a conversation with you about their estate plan, not the one they eventually buy from you, but the one they have right now, you're knocking on the right door. Because they will open it and welcome you in if you will just do that. So, so that, that this is the starting point. This is the beginning. And, and if you master the beginning, you never have to worry about everything else. Because you'll be so busy. The only way you'll be able to control your income is to take a nap or decide to take a day off or go do something recreationally fun. Or just relax. Sometimes I'm not very good at that. The reason I'm not very good at it is because my momentum uh, is so strong. that, it, And I realize how many lives I've been able to touch. And how many lives I've been able to change. And how many lives I've been able to protect. So, so let's talk about testimonials a minute. If you become distinctive in the marketplace. Now, you know. Being distinctive in the financial services industry, I'll be honest with you, it's rare. Because, you know, uh, uh, there's a company out there, I, I think it's called uh, Prime America. And they go in and they say, buy term, invest the difference. Well, great. That's a, that's a very narrow concept. Okay. That you're leaving everything else behind uh, if, if people aren't interested in your original premise. That's called a premise. Well, 
if you become distinctive, and I'm not cutting them, I'm saying that you know a lot, a lot of their people are very good, and 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 to be honest with you, we want them to join us. You become distinctive in the marketplace because you will open the door to a relationship with the suspect that helps your client get a win. That you know. I'm going to read that to you again because I'm you know open your ears. Accept this. You will become distinctive in the marketplace because you will open the door to a relationship with the suspect that helps your client get a win. And what is the win? Well, the win is is you help them. Well, one of my power phrases is, hey, you've done a good job with your assets. Don't you think I'll go ahead and have the proper paperwork? I'm glad I don't have my camera on right now because I get too expressive. But but you will become the topic of family conversations for years to come because you will have helped your prospect client answer questions to which they have always wanted answers. Now, do you want that or do you want somebody to come in behind you and take your business? Because if I teach other people how to do this, they're going to come in behind you and take your business. So, so I'm just saying, are you ready to become a mentor of the families you choose to help? That's what you become. You know, I get so many people that say, Randy, you're family. And it's because I've drawn their family tree and helped them make their decisions. You can be their family too, if you wanted to be. So, so again, I, I just talked about the company a little bit, asset positioning services. We have a company background. We have a very good reputation, even though uh, their presence is a little loony sometimes. We achieve more than most insurance agents as a team. We have strategic initiatives that work, tactical and strategic. And we have a company impact on the industry. And I'll be honest with you, we are having quite an impact, if you ask me. The uh, uh, people are starting to recognize us. So, so again, my company background, if you want, you know, I don't know if you need my credentials. You probably don't need them. But but I've been around since 1983 in the insurance business. I used to be a school teacher. But I was trained as a product rep for a major Eastern Mutual Life company. I was trained to sell a particular product. Uh, led the company in that product uh, in the number of units sold. But I was so young. The number of units sold, the price was so low, about starved to death. But I had more unit sales than almost anybody. Uh-oh. wonder what that says. But anyway, I was the, distinct in what made me stand out when I was compared to other financial services representatives. I, you know, I had to stop representing the large Eastern mutuals and started representing the client. I guess that was early about 5.30 this morning. I left a T out there. I didn't, cross, I didn't have a T to cross, did I? I? I stopped representing the large Eastern mutuals and started representing the client. The way I did that was I slowly started over a 20-year period, not even realizing it, letting the family tree asset positioning go-to first interview evolve. So, so as I, be, I began to develop and improve and implement, not even knowing I was doing it, because I didn't write it down until uh, God almost called me home. But the family tree asset positioning go-to first interview, what, the key word to all of this, and this is where I find that that licensees fail themselves and their families and their clients because they do not implement correctly. So, you know, if you want to be uh, an eight-cylinder motor running on three cylinders, then don't implement correctly. But the starting point, the starting point is the identification of a suspect. So uh, what I want to do today is I just want to, Help you identify who these people are. And if you're smart, you'll grab a pencil and a piece of paper and start writing the names down because I'm going to tell you how to find these people.
Hey, you're smart anyway. I didn't mean that. But anyway, okay. So I want to talk to you about the approach. It's my approach. It's what I do. You don't have to do it, but if you're outperforming me, then you don't have to do it. If you want to come to the school with us, use my approach. It works. But my approach involves a zero pressure, stress-free first interview. It's casual. It can be done on a napkin. Be done in pencil and a pen. It can be, um, I could do it with four checkers or I could do it a whole, on a checkerboard with checkers. And it's designed to guide your suspects and prospects toward the purchasing decision without any pushiness. And there's many times where I'm with a client, I'll just throw my hands up or I'll put my hand on my forehead and I'll say, don't you think the, the right thing to do is have the proper paperwork? And But you know what? I can't just walk up and say that. I have to get them there. And, and the true art of what I'm trying to teach you is the ability to get someone mindset-wise ready to listen to what you have to say and act on it. And I know I didn't capitalize my I. It puts you in what I call a sweet spot. And, and, you know, when I tell you all the mistakes I make on my PowerPoints, I'm just going to give you a lesson. If you wait until everything's perfect, ain't nothing going to happen. Get that right. It, nothing has to be perfect to move forward. And I get, I get so many people that say, I can't do this because I got to feel perfect. Well, that's why you can't do it. So, so think about this, the strategic initiative that I'm trying to show you. And I'm trying to get this army of, of financial services reps to, to come with me. And, and, and all I know to say is, follow me. I'll show you the way. I don't know what, how else to do it. And, and if I turn around and you're not following me, I, it, there's, it's not my fault. And it's not my responsibility because the ones who do can do very well if they want to. So, so if I can show you the strategic in initiative, it sets you apart from the product salesperson. It makes you distinctive. No one has approached these people the way I'm showing you how to approach them. And all I'm trying to tell you is each person that follows the, the asset positioning services concept, the family of stocks, family tree asset positioning uh, presentation, if you're one of our representatives, you'll find yourselves in what I call the financial services sweet spot. And that's the sweet spot where, where people can't replace you because they have not done the estate plan and have not done the bonding process that you have done in advance before you started selling product. So what is a sweet spot? It's a position where if the client has a relationship change, an asset change, a health change, they will contact you first because you help them set up the proper estate plan. That's the secret sauce. So, so, the Family Tree Asset Positioning Go-To First Interview gives you market differentiation. It's a tactical method which sets you apart by creating a perceived advantage in the eyes of your target audience. That was about, it took me about two cups of coffee to come up with that, but it's true. It's, if you do what I'm showing you, other people will go, how did you do that? Why did they accept you and not me? It's because you were distinctive in your approach, professional in your approach, and low-key.
So, so we have a sales model. We've talked about it, you know, uh, and I've, I've tried to go through all these steps with you. Uh, and, and you need to understand what a typical week is because I don't think some of you know what a typical week is. And there's two kinds of activities in business. There's income producing activities and there's non-income producing activities. And some of us spend so much time in non-income producing activities that we don't have time to go out and make any money. So, so if you're the leader of your company and you're not doing income producing activities, how are people going to follow you and, and do what you want them to do if they can't see you doing it? So, you know, and, and this morning when we talked to the new licensees and the new entry level people, we talked to them about our comp plan and people are, are saying, are you going to reimburse us for this? Or are you going to pay for this? And the answer is no. If you want to learn to be independent and you want to learn to be successful and self-reliant, start at the beginning and design your own lifestyle. And then that's the answer. Now, all you got to do is ask the questions how to get there. And if you want $100,000 income, that means you got to have $8,333 a month income. Well, that's the answer. Why not ask the questions how to get there? You know, divide uh, 8,300 by 1,200 and you get seven. Divide uh, 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 8,300 by 0 0.07 and you get every how many that numbers that is to maybe a, about a hundred and a little over a hundred thousand dollars in annuity sales. Add both of them and you just doubled your income. It's really easy. So, so on our sales model, I, I try to teach you how to identify people who would benefit from a conversation with you about their current estate plan. I call this a suspect. Other people out there call, call it a prospect. Well, I know better. It's not. You know, before you approach your suspect, and I hope you guys are listening, this is important. Before you approach your suspect, spend some time in, in a personal observation of that person's life and family arrangements. That tells me that the, the first people, the, the most, the, the, the easiest sales you're going to make are people that you already know about their personal life, but you have not helped them organize it or put it in priority orders uh, for the selection of people who are going to represent them when their ability to speak for themselves is gone. That, that's what determines what you say in the approach. You know, every approach is different but every approach is the same. Do it correctly, and it virtually guarantees they will want to talk to you on a favorable basis, which was what, that's where you build the bridge from, from uh, suspect to prospect. You convert them to la di da to hi ho Because you, you know, a suspect, you can't take to the bank, but you can take 10 prospects to the bank and cash them in for seven sales and three back end sales and a lot of money. So, so, you know, and I've talked to you before about building a bridge from a suspect to a prospect. If you cannot build the bridge, you'll always be on the wrong side of the river because all you're doing right now, if you don't build that bridge, is you're looking across that river at someone you want to do business with and you can't figure a way to get over there. That's what that's where most people are in the sales department of most companies who are not doing well in sales or who want to increase their sales. They have to try to figure out how to get over to that prospect. And the answer is build the bridge. So that means we have to have a definition of a prospect. 
And a prospect is someone who agrees to talk with you on a favorable basis. You know, the biggest skill in salesmanship is the ability to get someone to agree to talk to you on a favorable basis. That's it. That's how easy it is. And you have to be confident about it. And you have to project that confidence. But you also have to project that confidence in a way that you can just slide right in. So anyway, identifying the suspect is the first step. You have to, and this, and this is where we're, what we're about to do is going to get deep and it's going to get heavy. So you be ready. I hope you're ready to accept what I'm about to say to you in the next few minutes. But identifying the suspect is the first step. You have to understand the different avatars of marketing your product. Now, somebody told me that, that I just created the word avatar because of that movie with those blue people. Well, I didn't. An avatar has always been a, 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 de a word in the marketing world since, since the beginning of time. And, and uh, uh, Fred Flintstone had an, uh, an avatar in Wilma. He had a perfect woman. He went out and hit her with a club, drug her into his cave. But, but it, it was the avatar first. And then he finally put a name on it. Wilma. So he personified his avatar. And yeah, uh, the only thing I didn't like about Fred Flintstone is he smoked Winston cigarettes on TV. But anyway, an avatar is not a person. It's a description of a type of person that fits a description of someone who would need your product or, or service. It's, it's just a description. They're not a prospect, and it doesn't have a name. And it can't be a prospect until you give it a name. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk through this, and, and I cover these topics in the book, Family Tree Asset Position, the go-to first interview. It's an ebook. It's in the Fast Track Training if you don't have a copy of it, send me an email, either Greg or Jay or, or me or Lisa. Somebody will get you another copy of it. It's a great book if, you're, if you need to learn how to approach people and how to identify people. And, and if you will read the book again based on the people that you know and look at your window and look at your church and look at the, the, uh, where you go get an ice cream cone, you know, wherever you will see people who would benefit from a conversation with you about their current state plan. So, you know, here, here they are. Who do you approach? You might do uh, single adults, newlyweds, new parents, divorced parents, extended heads of households, single parents, new wealthy, new careers, pre-retirees, retirees, new health problems, disabled children, poor money handlers, debt burden, same-sex couples, and May-November relationships just as they start. And if you go through uh, and name these people, okay, when I look through them, I'd go uh, Rusty. Uh, Courtney and Robert, and you know, I can go down and name people like this. Uh, divorced parents, I, I can say I know some divorced parents, I know some extended heads of households, I know some single parents, I know some people that have either won the lottery or or found out found a, a two hundred thousand dollar coin in their backyard with their brand new metal detector. Okay, or somebody that just started a new career who who which is what I hope for our entry level people. They start a new career and they go from making twenty five thousand dollars a year to making eighty or ninety or two hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, uh, people getting ready to retire. I, I know people getting ready to retire. I'm, you know, uh, 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 some people retire at fifty, some at sixty two, some at sixty five. Some of us are workaholics and don't even know what the definition of the word is. You know. People with new health problems. Y'all don't know my friend Bob. Uh, Bob died last night with uh, heart failure. And he's 77. But when he was 60, he was uh, really stressed out about becoming 60. So we had a birthday party and uh, we created a new age. We called it 5010. He didn't have to be 60. He was just going to be 50, 10. <laughs> so, but uh, that was 17 years ago when we had that fun in the backyard when he was upset about being 60. So 
So, you know, but how many people do you know that have disabled children? You can put names on that. You know, how many people do you know that have children that are poor money handlers? And what if you take two of these things? What if you went in and said, here's a, a uh, pre-retiree with uh, a new health problem and one disabled child and a poor money handler with a lot of debt? Well, all of a sudden, you ought to be able to put a name on that. And you know what? They'd probably benefit from a conversation with you about their current state plan. So, so look, we're going to break them down just real quick. The single adult. Now, do you know any single adults? I do. They could be male or female. They may have parents. They may not have parents. They may be single because they're divorced. They may be thinking about getting married. They need to make decisions of representation and distribution, even though they're single. A lot of people, you know, uh, and you know who suffers the most from not being approached correctly, in my opinion, and that is single females. You know, traditionally we think uh, a female has to be cared for or taken care of, uh, but you know, single females can be independent. They can be great. You know, and, and I'm, uh, for you female licensees out there, don't bypass them. Approach them. So the next one is newlyweds. And they get up and they make a promise to death till they part in sickness and health and good times and bad. But that's not recognized by the insurance companies. When it comes to making decisions about their 401k and their IRA, the insurance company wants a power of attorney for finances. They don't care if you're married or not. How about new parents? Consider the risk of a newborn. Here they come into the world. Hey, mom. Hey, dad. I know that you're going to take care of me because I'm so dependent on you. But if you pass away before I get to be an adult, how am I going to get access to your life insurance money? Without having to go to court. So, so you know, you can ask any, any parents of newlyweds, you know, who would the parents want to be in control? And don't you think you ought to have the right paperwork? How about divorced parents? All of a sudden, they, they you know, they were newlyweds. Uh, they they had a baby, and then they got a divorce, and and now they don't want their spouse to be their their uh, trustee, their successor trustee. They don't want them to be their executor. They might not want them to be their power attorney for finances, and they certainly might not want them to be power attorney for health care. Well, write down the names of all the people that you know that are divorced. And then you have a list of suspects and, and, and they're not avatars anymore because you can put a name on them, which makes them a persona. Once you establish that avatar and make them a persona, you have a list of people that you can go approach and you can warm the approach up using the videos that we have. Hey, I saw you got divorced. I think maybe you might want to take a look at this video on my website and uh, maybe sometimes in the future, I think you might uh, benefit from having a conversation with me about your current state plan. Well, how about an extended head of households? Someone thrown into the responsibility of a group of children or adults. How many, how many grandparents do you know that are taking care of their grandchildren because they're, they didn't do a real good job with their children? And, and their children aren't doing a very good job with your grandchildren or their grandchildren. Th don't you think that maybe those people might uh, benefit from a conversation with you about their, their estate plan? And then, and then let's go into, uh, okay, single parents. Uh, you, you might want to find out why they're single. Or you might already know why they're single. They're either divorced or widowed or, or single by choice. Or, uh, who would they depend on? Who, you know, has anyone had the conversation of, of who would you depend on if you were uh, in the hospital tonight on a table in a coma and a doctor didn't think that you were going to live? Who would they choose? And, you know, that's not trying to sell them anything. Just, just say, hey, 
let me ask you a question. If you were in a hospital tonight, in a coma, on a table, and the doctor didn't think you were going to survive, who would you pick to represent you? And if you had already drawn their family tree on a piece of paper, they'll take their finger and put it right in the hole. So, so let's talk about the new wealthy, a lottery winner or an heir to an estate. I've got a couple of heirs to a state right now that our sisters and they hate each other's guts. And they want to trust as quick as they can get it. Or, or, or maybe you sold a business. Or, or maybe you know someone who sold a business. Or, or, or maybe even married a sugar daddy. <laughs> Somebody told me the other day they were looking for one. Okay, or, or maybe you run into somebody who's actually a kept man or a kept woman, if you know what that means. You know, how secure are they? How about somebody in a new career or somebody in a change of geography, somebody who, who lives in Tennessee and got a job in Iowa? Well, if you know somebody that's just moved, you know, and most of the trusts that we're selling right now in Teleco Village or in Crossville in Tennessee, those are people that have moved into Tennessee from another state and don't have the proper paperwork to stay in Tennessee if they die. And, and that automatically comes up to what, what's happening is attorneys are charging them uh, for whole new estates. But if one of your clients bought our product and moved to another state, they can do a restatement with no additional legal fees. That adds value to your price. And then, and then pre-retirees, people that are 55 to 63 or 64, 65, they're, they're considering the next stage of their life. If you know who they are, if you if you live in near a factory, if you live near a, an industrial town, or if you live near anywhere that you see that people are are getting close to retirement age, uh, you might, your pharmacist, your doctor, hey, uh, you know, you might benefit from a conversation with me about your current estate plan. I know you're getting ready to retire. Maybe I might be able to teach you some things or show you some things you're not aware of. So, so and, and retirees, uh, you know, retirees got a lot of money because they're retired and they, they uh, didn't retire maybe because they didn't have a lot of money. But if they retired, they probably have a lot, little bit of money. And, and their biggest fear is that they're going to run out of that money. But you can't walk up and say, I know your biggest fear, you're going to run out of money. What you say is, hey, you might benefit from a conversation with me about your current estate plan. And it will lead to the conversation about their biggest fear of running out of money. You do it right, and then, and then, how about somebody with a recent change in health? Uh, Toby Keith was about five years ago was told he had stomach cancer. I hope he had a friend, somebody that was in the financial services industry, that said, "Toby, I think you would benefit from a conversation with me about your current health plan." Nobody said that to Michael Jackson. Nobody said that to Prince. Nobody said that to Elvis Presley. But if you learn that somebody that you know has had a health change, when you learn of this, they'll be very receptive to your approach. Not, hey, I want to talk about your new cancer, but I think you might benefit from a conversation with me about your current state plan. So, so how about di disabled adults and children? People responsible for the disabled will want to review their current, I misspelled a state. My gosh. Uh, but I don't care. I, did, I didn't let it stop me from doing my presentation, did I? I didn't let it stop. You know, I didn't say a little mistake is going to keep me from or uh, from doing what I, I, I really enjoy doing and that I do very well. It's okay. You know, but disabled adults and children, uh, um, and Liz, I know if you're out there, you don't you don't like misspelled words, and I appreciate that. Uh, but anyway, people responsible for the disabled will want to review their current estate plans. They will, and 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 they're used to people talk to them about their disabled child. You know, how about a poor money handler? Your 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 estate plans that you are built. You know, the, the family estate docs are built in. They have built in spendthrift provisions. That 
we'll let the trustee decide if someone's a poor money manager and we'll make sure that they have the benefit of that money without control of the asset. Well, if you know people like that, they'd probably want to hear from what you, what you got to say. Sometimes they even need to be protected from themselves. Excuse me, themselves. So how about people with debt burdens? You know, if you leave the money inside the trust, the, the creditors can't get to it. So you, you know anybody with some debt problems or some children with debt problems? Or maybe you know somebody who's elderly and sick and has a child with debt problems? And a lot of times those, those ones with debt problems are also newly divorced. And, and how about same-sex couples? You know, sometimes at same-sex couples, the families don't like the fact that they're same-sex couples. And there's problems when one of them gets sick and goes to the hospital. If they don't have the proper paperwork, the, other, the families try to come in and take over. And if, if you're a same-sex couple, and if you have the right paperwork, that family can't come in and do that to you and the person you love. How about a May-November relationship? And I, I, uh, I told you a story about my friend who's my age and had a 30-year-old wife and a three-year-old child and, and uh, his wife got killed and then he died of cancer and then all of a sudden there was a three-year-old child there. Luckily, he had life insurance. I sold him in an estate plan that, that I made him buy uh, because I loved him and he was my friend and I made him look at the fact that he probably wasn't going to survive to see his son uh, reach adulthood. And what I did was I said, hey, Rick, uh, you'd probably benefit from a conversation with me about your current state plan, wouldn't you? And he said, yeah. So, so there's unlimited situations and environments. And you people who say you don't have anybody to see, I just want to go, what's wrong with you? Why do you not believe in what you know? And why do you not exercise what you know? And, and create a situation where you win and they win. So there's unlimited situation environments that can be solved with a conversation with one of the participants might benefit from a conversation with you about their current state plan. You know, and you've heard me say this before, it's not the one you want them to buy that you want to have the conversation about. It's the one they currently have because it's probably not a very good one. Five out of 10 are going to go to probate and four out of the other five have a plan that they don't understand or was not appropriately set up or properly funded. Nine out of every 10 people you can put on that list. If you're starting to make a list are going to be open to the conversation. They're just, they just don't know that you know what, that they just don't know what you know and how are they going to know unless you tell them? So the family tree asset positioning go-to first interview, it helps the prospect determine the need for a will, a trust, or the government plan called probate. That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. So this conversation leads to the front end sale. I'm sure every one of you right now have a list of about 25 or 30 suspects. That's going to lead to a front end sale. It's going to lead to a new improved estate plan or a restatement of an existing plan. And I'm getting a lot of questions about restatements here lately. That tells me that there's, there's more activity going out there in my uh, team. And it's happening all over the United States. And it makes me feel good because those people in Iowa or those people in Montana or those people in California don't even know that I'm having an impact on their life. And I, it, it really does make me feel good that if I can get someone that I've never met uh, to become a licensee and go approach somebody that they know and change their lives, it, it, it's like a, throwing a pebble in a pond and watching the ripple grow. You can do that too. I hope you will. But but 
When you do the front end sale, it leads to the required analysis for proper funding of that plan and, the, and in most cases leads to repositioning of assets to properly fund the new plan. And that's what I call the back end sale, but I also call it uh, a deposit in the bank. And, and it's one that people don't mind me having because I've, I've done what they needed to have done and I helped them identify it. I helped them create the, the, the actual thought process. You know, so, so in order to get to the back end sale, you first have to identify the avatar. Look at these, all these people. Huh. You first must identify the avatar and then place a name on the avatar and give it a persona and a name on the list of people to approach. That's where the those of you who are not making much money right now or, or telling me that they can't approach somebody or don't have anybody to see, that's where you're making your mistake. Fix it. So, you know, how simple can it be? If someone walks up and says, you're going to achieve in this business, if you do one approach, one go-to first interview, one funding process, then seek avocation and repeat it. We call it the cycle of success. And if you're having a problem with that, uh, send me an email and I'll let you talk to Greg Davis. He's my cycle of success expert right now. And, and he's doing real well with it. He's helping a lot of people. But, but you know, you have to know what a typical week is. What is today? Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry you're talking to somebody that doesn't know what day it is. But anyway, uh, a typical week is you attend the appropriate weekly training workshops. And we have four of them right now, and there's going to be five soon. We have this one on Tuesday, which is for the experienced licensees. And then we have two on Tuesday morning and Wednesday afternoon for the entry-level people uh, uh, to learn about our, our system. And then we have one on Friday afternoon for those entry-level people to get involved in the learning process. Uh, uh, I was really pleased uh, last Friday when I realized that over half the people that attended our entry level uh, were new licensees and, and non-productive licensees that need to learn what they need to do or need to accept the fact that they know what they need to do and just haven't done it. So, so, so and it's okay if you haven't done it because it's your choice. And again, I, I keep telling people, I don't want to push you or pull you. I want you to design the lifestyle you want to have and how estate planning will fit into that and do, do it because you want to. So, so I, I need you to develop and work your suspect list. That's, where, that's the, the true secret. I need you to schedule your first interviews. I need you to talk with your mentor weekly if you have one. If you don't have one, you do. I will help you in any way. Greg will help you in any way. Jay will help you in, in any way. And for some of you who are master licensees, people look up to you to help them learn what they need to learn. Just use the go-to first interview. That's all you have to do. So, so the role of the first interview presenter, that's it. We call that the entry-level person. We also call it the the bronze licensee who has a monthly uh, uh, payment that, that, to keep his software going or the, the uh, copper who has an annual license or the silver who has a, a license to, to uh, run the software and owns their own estate plan. A lot of you people are, are they, you pay the annual fee and you, and, and you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Some of you are running around without an estate plan. And those same people are usually the people that aren't making many sales because they don't believe enough. They don't own what they're trying to sell. So, so to establish the, the first step of a long-term relationship, you have to set up the back-end sale, but you have to make the front-end sale. And we talked about this, you know, uh, what does it really take to be successful? You know, uh, you have to start with setting a, a front end appointment. You have to start by by identifying the avatar and turning them into uh, a name, which gives them a suspect, and then you get them to talk to you on a favorable basis, which makes them a prospect. And then you do the first 
go, you do the go to first interview. And, and in most cases that makes them a client and you set the stage for the back end sale. That's how you unlock success at asset positioning services. And I haven't said life insurance policies. I haven't said annuity policies. I haven't said long-term care contracts. I haven't said assets under management. I've said set the stage for the back-end sale. And, and, and when you set that stage for the back-end sale, all you're doing is going in and making a diagnosis uh, like a doctor would do when you go in and you do the family tree and you talk to them about their assets and their health and everything. And you say, look at this. Don't you think this illness uh, needs to be properly funded so that you won't leave your spouse uh, destitute or without any assets if you die? Doesn't that make sense? And I ask people all the time, doesn't that make sense? And how can they tell me no? Well, they can. But when they do that, they're telling their spouse that maybe they don't love them. So, so you know, the first step in the cycle of success then is to make a commitment to identify people who you think would benefit from a conversation with you about their current state plan. It is so simple. I know you sound like you think I'm probably sound like a broken record. And, and to be honest with you, I am. You know, if 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 something's broken and the way to fix it is one easy step. And you go ahead and live with it being broken because you don't take that easy step. That's your fault. So, you know, if you want to unlock success in this program, the one that I teach, I recommend that you emulate what we do without innovating. You folks who are innovating now, your incomes are lower than those who are emulating. I can tell that by looking at your production reports. And I know that you're either not making enough appointments because you uh, have too much anxiety about getting rejected, but th maybe that's not it at all. Maybe you just are not developing your list because you're doing non-income producing activities instead of income producing activities. And the, and the biggest income producing activity you can do is identify your avatars and give them a persona and approach them with one sentence that works. So, so if you just emulate what I do in 30 to 60 days, I will have taught you what you need to know. You will begin implementing at your own pace. I'm not going to push you or pull you. You design your experience and I will help and, and we will mentor your growth if you want our help. Now, some of you guys don't need it. Some of you already make more money than me. And, and, and all you're doing is taking what we're teaching here and applying it to what already exists in your business. That's great. But some of you need to take what we teach and apply it to your business so you can build your business and make it grow. So what are the career opportunities? You know, growth doesn't start or stop within our core sales row. Our core sales row is to teach you to approach people and make an appointment for the front end sale. It doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop at making the back end sale. It doesn't even stop on the future sales that come with the, with the sweet spot relationship that you're going to build. But you know, Expanding what I, I do here creates more opportunities for you. And if you're learning, if you're learning on this, and if you already know this sales presentation, you know, if you have an agency, teach some of your other agents. If you don't have an agency, teach some people on the entry level. You know, most insurance recruiters saying, get your insurance license, get your insurance license, get your insurance license. You can't make any money until you get your insurance license. Spend three three or four weeks or six weeks to get your insurance license. That's not what we say. We say, learn our entry level process. And if you want to get your insurance license, study for it while you are developing and creating an income for yourself. And to do that, 
use the family tree asset position and go to first interview. And you can go back and fund those things as soon as you get your license. You have an income while you're getting licensed. And no, I won't reimburse you for it. You're a business person. Invest your money. Invest your time. So, you know, you control your growth and your path. If you concentrate on the training that we offer, and you follow our coaching, and if you upgrade when you are ready, what do I mean by upgrade? Well, I mean an entry-level person can become a licensee, either on a monthly or an annual basis. That makes them a bronze person. We call them bronze and copper. Well, copper is an annual licensee, and that tells me that they're willing to invest a whole year into their learning process. But, but it, you know, what I'm trying to tell you is you get a return on your investment in the first couple of weeks if you want it. Some of you go 11 months and don't get a return on your investment. Of, and it's a very low investment. And it's because you don't do the things that you need to do to set up the front end sale. But anyway, level one is the entry level rep. The entry level rep will learn how to make the front end sale. The back end sale will be handled by your mentor. And if you're a, a true entry level person, you don't make $1,200, you make $500 because your mentor has to go deliver the contract because they're, you're not licensed. Uh, but as soon as you say that you don't want to make $500, you want to make $1,200, all you got to do is tell us and we'll, uh, all you got to do is tell Greg Davis and Greg will fix that. Your mentor will help you get this done. So, but if you want if you want to upgrade to a bronze level, it costs one hundred forty nine dollars and ninety cents for month one. It's it's forty nine dollars and ninety five cents for the license. But we have a training fee, and the reason we have a training fee of ninety nine dollars and ninety five cents is is there is a high dropout rate on the monthly producers that does not exist on the people on the copper level. We have a high dropout on the bronze because people don't commit. The $49.95 is so easy uh, to do for a couple months. And then that's where we have the dropout rate is within 30, 60, 90 days because the people aren't conditioned or they're not disciplined enough to, to emulate our process. And then that $49 becomes big instead of small. And it ought to be itty bitty teensy weensy. But if you look at it and say, oh no, it's huge. You cannot see the opportunity. So, so you, you can go, you, you can choose to stay on the entry level as long as you want. Uh, it, you know, you design your own program, you state the answer. I'll help you ask the questions how to get there, you know, or you can go to bronze or copper or silver or gold, a silver, a, a sil you know, and y'all don't even know it. We call you this, but th th you know, a silver licensee is someone who has a paid an annual license fee and, has shown proof of the ownership of an estate plan. And you know what? My silver representatives and silver licensees are outproducing the coppers 10 to 1 because they believe. And then the gold, the, the gold people, those are people that that uh, want to build an agency and we teach them how to build the agency. Everybody else, we're teaching them how to do one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the GO people, we're teaching them how to build an agency and recruit and, and train and develop. Uh, a lot of those people are called master licensees. Some have earned it. Some some have been given, had it given to them for reasons. But you've already been introduced to bronze. And copper saves you $100 per year by paying the annual license fee of $495 a year. Silver costs eleven ninety dollars in year one and includes your own state plan. Gold allows you to be a recruiting mentor, not the topic of today's class. That's a whole different thing, and I, I won't spend a, an hour on that. But but this is discussed after your first upgrade. If you want to come in on the entry level, you if you want to recruit people on the entry level, they do not have to be licensed insurance agents. They just have to be willing to have a conversation with people where that person they're having a conversation with benefits from a conversation with them about their current state plan. That's it. So you do do that when you're ready. There's no pressure. You know, I'm just trying to say this is the way to go. Let, let me tell you a story um, real quick. Um, I knew a man who was on the USS Indianapolis 
and it got torpedoed and sunk. And 833 sailors survived the first night, and sharks uh, over five days whittled them down to, I think it was like 217. And while he was out there on the fourth day, he saw a pallet floating out there and it had a bag on it that he was almost positive that that bag on that pallet was a bag of potatoes. And he knew that that he had built a little floating island off of life jackets from the dead sailors. And that was, kept the sharks from getting him. And he knew that he had to jump in the water and swim to that pallet and get those potatoes. And he had a private with him and the private said, I'll go with you. And they jumped in the water because they were so hungry and they swam to that pallet. But the sharks got the private and pulled him under. And the sergeant made it to the pallet. So here's what I'm saying to you. If, the, if those two sailors on that little floating island had had a steel screen to the left and to the right between them and that pallet, and they could see the shark fins on the left and see the shark fins on the right, why would they not follow the straight, true course and be safe? That man was my friend. He died about a year ago. Uh, he was the one that was guarding the atomic bomb that was on the Indian the USS Indianapolis that they dropped on Hiroshima. But but he would have loved to have had a straight course that was guaranteed safe because it cost him his little uh, private buddy. So so here, here's all I'm saying to you. First, let's get you trained and, and let me show you the path to safety, the, the path to uh prosperity and then once we get you trained let us coach you when you when you have a problem let us talk about that problem and we probably have a solution to show you how to get over that problem and some of you got real mindset hang-ups some of you don't so next step talk to your mentor talk to me talk to greg talk to jay talk to to ed taylor talk to anybody that's written some business and, and knows what's going on Establish your first 10 suspects. That's the easiest thing in the world. Establish your first, you know, de de define your avatar and put a name on it. And now you have 10 suspects uh, that you think would benefit from a conversation with you about your current, their current estate plan. Not the one you want to sell, the one they have. But those suspects will learn something they were not aware of. Everybody learns something they're not aware of in this conversation. They will act on their new awareness. Unless you try to cram it down their throat. You don't have to. You can act like Columbo, the, the detective, and go, don't you think there's something you ought to take care of? But you can't say that to them unless you set the stage right. I'd give you the script to set that stage where you can say that one sentence. You've done a good job with your assets. Don't you think you ought to have the proper paperwork? So, so they'll act on their new awareness and they will do this by making a front end purchase. And that's what we call the front end sale. So anyway, are you stuck with no progress? Some of you are. I talk to many agents and licensees every day and I see and hear the issues they face or say they are facing. And in many cases, I hear good reasons but I don't hear real reasons. There's a difference between a good reason and a real reason. And people give me good reasons all the time. And I, can, I always want to say, yeah, well, the real reason, though, is you don't have a list of suspects. But I don't say it, but I want to. But So in, in most cases, lack of progress is found in poor implementation of the approach. It's just that easy. So next week in review, uh, next week's class, it's not going to be about the approach at all. Next week's class is going to be about preparing for the go-to interview. But without good approaching, learning the next step has little value. So you folks who say, I can't do this until I learn this presentation, you are giving me a real good reason that it is not the real reason. I 
I put my email address on there. If you remember my name, you can find me on my email if I don't uh, lose it. But I just want to thank you guys for your time today. I know this has been a long, a long thing, but, but, you know, if I can just drive the message home, you'll be safe and wealthy. So, you know, all these questions. If you have questions, send them to me. If it's a question I think Greg can handle or Jay can handle, uh, I stay so busy. I, I, I may pass you off to Greg and say, Greg, talk to this person about this topic. Um, some of you say that, that I'm hard to get a hold of. Well, I'm hard to get a hold of because I've got a client base that I have to work with. That's why Greg and Jay exist in my life is because they can help us build, I, I call it, uh, uh, force multipliers. But but I will get the appropriate staff person if I if I don't have time to answer it to answer your questions. And you you master licensees over there that accepted the roles of master licensee. You if you're not answering any questions, it's because you don't have a downline or you don't have people that you're trying to bring into the company uh, to to build your business and theirs, and they need you. So, so uh, momentum builds slowly. It does. But it's like a snowball rolling down a hill. It's like a train going down the track at 90 miles an hour. It can't stop quickly, but it also can't build up that speed quickly. It has to build it gradually. So, you know, you want to be successful in this business? Build your momentum. Understand what that means. So here's the thought for next week. And it, 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 this is, you know, I, I put this whole conversation day into this one thought. And it's something you should never forget. I don't want you to ever forget it. I hope you'll hold on to it. But if you connect the features of the family estate docs with the benefits your prospects want, and they may not even know they want it yet, they, they, they know they need it, and it's on the back of their mind. But do this with the family tree asset positioning. Go to FERT. Huh. <laughs> Did you know that was a FERT? Uh, that, uh, that's, that's not a misspelling. I'm sorry. Uh, go, to the, go to first interview. Whenever you talk about estate planning features, always follow up by saying, which means to you. So think about, think about this, Okay. Four simple words that bridge features and benefits. Here's an example. Mr. Prospect, family estate docs is best because you'll own the license to adjust your estate plan as you have life changes, which means to you that when you have relationship changes, asset changes, and health changes, you'll get the results you told me you wanted. Pretty powerful if you, if you spell it right. But, you know, if, if you're using logic and reason and you set the stage and follow the script and use the power phrases and follow the agenda, your chances of them coming to that conclusion are very, very high. I'm going to say close to 70% or better. And then I just want to wrap it up with the same thing I've been telling you folks over and over and over. It's true. You're gaining a lot of knowledge. It's just being administered on a sixth grade level because that's all I'm supposed to do in the University of Tennessee says on my diploma. But knowledge is useless storage of data if it's not used appropriately. Uh, Lynn and I have been watching uh, that Little Shelton movie uh, uh, on the Big Bang, Little Shelton. And he is such a big power, you know, he's so powerful in knowledge, but he does not use it correctly. He insults people with it. He, he uses it the wrong way. And, and it's funny. But it's not what you know. It's not what you learn today. It's what you do with it. 
and, and, and if you're attending today, if you stuck with me for this whole hour uh, uh, and 15 minutes, 16 minutes, then you must be looking for something. And, and now I'm going to tell you what it is. Implement. Take what you learned today and implement. You all know we're in the search for, for uh, we don't want 140 licensees anymore. I want 1,000. I want 1,400. And that's nowhere near enough. I promise you, uh, 2,000 uh, people running uh, the the family tree asset position and go to first interview will nowhere touch the size of this market. That's how easy it is right now. A couple years ago, it might not be that easy. So anyway, that's all I got to say. I'll take some questions if anybody wants to uh, um, talk. Uh, Lisa, is there anybody in the chat room that has any questions? Uh, one question from Liz says, what are made to November relationships? What are they? Yes. What are made um, to November? Okay. There, there was a, this uh, actress, I don't, know, I don't know if she was an actress or whatever, but she was about 30 years old. And she married this guy who was 90. Uh, and, and when he died, the family attacked her because they didn't have the proper paperwork. But, you know, uh, he just wanted to live the last couple of years of his life with a beautiful uh, uh, trophy wife that that he wanted to show everybody. Okay, uh, a May November romance can also be uh, maybe uh, my friend that I told you about, who's my age and married a thirty year old girl, and he was thirty five years older than her, and she gave him a son, and neither one of them are, are alive today to take care of that child. A May November romance can be uh, uh, a wealthy widow with a, a trophy pool boy. Okay. Uh, I, but it could actually be true love. It's just, you know, if you're three or four decades of difference in age, there's going to be a, 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 a relationship change and an asset change and a health change. Uh, they're going to happen. Don't you think you ought to have proper paperwork to deal with that relationship? I think you might benefit from a conversation with me about your estate plan. I hope that answers that question. Anything else? Looks like another one uh, popped up. Yes, Liz says he understands the situation. Thanks. Uh, no, there are no more questions in the chat. Okay. So, so today... Uh, I, Charles says... Uh, Randy, remind me of the annual fee for the client to view their plan. Uh, right now, it's not being charged. It's twenty nine dollars and ninety five cents, soon to be announced. Uh, they don't have to pay it, but if they do pay it, uh, the software will maintain their data. It'll maintain it anyway, but it won't release it uh, if the twenty nine dollars ninety five cent fee is not up to date. So if you went three years and didn't pay the fee and then needed to reopen your case, they would charge you three times $29.95. The other estate planning companies that are out there are charging $150 a year. So you don't have to apologize for the $29.95. Um, um, and it's not even being charged at this time, but I think it will be soon because um, I, I don't know that the data banks are getting full, but but it's worth $29 to have it saved in, for you. Hope that answers your question, Charles. Uh, another yes. question? Charles says, thanks. Uh, no, no more questions in the chat. All right. So, so um, I've done my, oh, okay, I'll, I'll give you my Patsy Cline statement. Patsy Cline used to sing country music before she ran into that mountain. And I hope I don't know if she had an estate plan or not, but she got in an airplane with somebody and flew up on a cloudy day and crashed in the side of a mountain. But that's neither here nor there for right now. But, but when she would go in and get in front of people and get up on stage and sing, when she was finished singing, she'd look at those people and she'd say, and that's the best I can do. 
And that's what I did today. I tried to show you the one thing that you can do that leads you to total success in the estate planning world. And that's approach people to talk to them about their current estate plan. All right. It's uh, been a long day. Uh, uh, I've had two classes today. I don't know if some of you attended both of them. Some of you didn't. But anyway, if there's not any other questions, just remember, 2024, Randy Baxter, president of Asset Positioning Services, Limited Liability Corporation, says, implement what you have learned. Uh, Randy, other... is a... I'm sorry? There's a question. Okay. Uh, Andre says, are there chargebacks if the client no longer wants the plan? No. Um, no. No. Um, and Andrew, you're new. Uh, if you follow my sales presentation, uh, once they give you the money, they have purchased the estate plan. Now, I have refunded some money for people that didn't, uh, two people that that when I talked to them and found out that the licensee didn't do it right and, and didn't tell them this, the, the right things, uh, I have uh, refunded their money um, and gave them the estate plan. And fired the agent, you know. But there's, uh, there's not any chargebacks. The if you do it right, um, you're not going to have any chargebacks. The people aren't going to change their mind. They're they're going to say thank you. So I hope that answers your question, Andrew. Yes, he said thank you. Okay, and and you can have full confidence in that. One, we will never do what's not right for the client. But at the same time, if you will do the presentation correctly, you will never have a problem with the client. Anything else? Looks like another one popped up there, did it? Uh, nothing more in the chat. Liz just said thank you. Okay. All right. So, so listen, I got to go. It's been a long day. Um, um, you can go to... Uh, Randall Baxter at RandallBaxter.com and ask any question you want. You can go to our website at, uh, at RandallBaxter.com and the, the correct person will be in touch with you. And that'll either be uh, Randy or Greg or Jay or might even be Lisa, who knows? And, and uh, uh, we'll do our best to answer your questions. Now, don't ask me questions about level four and level five in the presentation if you haven't mastered level one because that tells me that that you're delaying and you're giving me good reasons and not real reasons. Master the process. Learn to approach. Learn to build the bridge to the prospect. Learn to do the, the go-to first uh, interview. Ask them to buy. When they buy, set the stage for the back-end sale. They cannot have an estate plan without the funding process. And once you do the funding process, you'll pick up a sale or two or three and you'll make some pretty good money, but then you'll get all future sales after that. You want them. Okay. All right. That was fun. I hope y'all don't mind me. Uh, and excuse my misspelled words. Um, they weren't done on purpose, but I didn't let it stop me move, from moving forward. And I, I'll be honest, when I saw them, I didn't even know I'd misspelled them until I looked down. So anyway, I hope you guys have a good day. And, and, uh, uh, February's here. If you if you don't sell three estate plans this month, uh, that's up to you. But if you do sell three estate plans, you're probably going to have one humongous back in sale. That's all I got to say about that. Anyway, uh, do I just uh, I guess I'm just going to stop my share and say goodbye unless I see more questions pop up. And I'm going to uh, take the rest of the day off. So uh, anybody else? No more questions. All right. Everybody have a great day and uh, send me an email if you need to have any questions. And I'll talk to you later. Bye. Thanks, Thanks so much. Bye. Thanks, Randy. All right.